So John, what is Pandemic? Pandemic is an interactive film. It was a commission from the Science Museum in London as a reaction to the Frankenstein Festival that was running two weekends ago. So it's a modern retelling of Frankenstein. The film itself is about a pandemic of viral myocarditis which results in lots of people getting heart failure. So there's a big need for donor organs that can't be provided by anyone, uh, any set of donors because the number of donors would be enormous. So the group of geneticists that you're involved with are creating a half pig, half human, and that percentage of DNA is one of the key questions, hybrid to provide donor hearts. We're working blind. We don't know what areas to remove and what to keep. Well, how accurate are you trying to be? We're trying to find the exact area that defines... Increase the level of human DNA overall. Make it 60% more chance it'll work. You can't just do that. We can do whatever we like. The whole creature, not just the heart. Even if the resulting embryo was viable, 60% is more human than pig. As an audience member, you are asked to make binary decisions, yes or no, in lots of moral situations. What's really interested me was to make like a choose-your-own-adventure book, but you're not choosing whether or not to hit an orc or run away from a dragon. You're making a really moral decision that's going to have a long-term impact that you're going to have to watch in a cinema play out and accept the effect of your action. So a lot of the impact of your decisions are deliberately clouded to you when you're making the decision to see to get more of a a reaction from the audience really to make them realize that what I think is a binary decision is going to have almost chaotic implications I was interested in the decision not being you've decided to do this and you get this or that you've decided to do this but actually this thing you never really thought of is going to come out of left field because of your decision and really throw you off in a totally different direction just like real life just like real life (laughs) being the idea yeah now, you've already had it play at the Science Museum, as you said, and, it, and it'll be online soon. I just wondered from the, the people who've played it so far, are the people who visit the Science Museum, do they tend to be the rationalists or are they idealists? What kind of decisions were they making and what, led, what did they lead to? Without too many spoilers. Uh, almost everyone were... So all of the groups, bar one, really chose the idealist decisions. They chose the decisions that were the least, I think, discomforting to them in the short term that felt the kindest to the creatures that they were looking after and these quite abstract numbers that they kept seeing of the dead affected them but they were much more concerned about the immediate interactions that they would have to deal with in the short term. I think it would be really interesting to get a group of scientists together to play it to see if they would be colder in inverted commas um, and be far more focused on the end result of what these creatures were there to achieve rather than a group of scientifically interested lay people who the general kind of science museum audience is but mostly people were very moral and very idealistic and as such the film as scripted punishes them for that <laughs> you dark soul yeah, yeah, yeah. I realised quite a, how dark and disturbing I am as a human being while writing this There's nowhere else to get funding. Then maybe we shouldn't do this. A pig-human hybrid. Lots of people are going to die because of your decision. If we did this, then what is the cost to us as human beings? If we didn't do it, if we just looked on, then what's the cost? We had a really basic red and white card system in the museum screenings. What that did was it allowed the audience to see how everyone else in the audience was voting. So we had this really interesting group effect that people would quite quietly make a decision and look around to see how everyone else was going. And there was quite a lot of decision changing to go with a group. Even within that, there were subgroups. There was a great group of teenage boys who turned up who just made the opposite decision to everyone else, who deliberately made the opposite decision. So it was interesting that All of the decisions people made were visible to everyone else to see how the group was working and I don't think people wanted to stand out that much. One group really early on chose two no's in a line which meant the super moral answer of I'm not even going to continue with the research which meant it lasted five minutes. So I then said to them we can go back in if you want and see what would happen. Then they became the most immoral group of people I'd ever seen who chose the worst, not the worst decisions, but the most horrible decisions. And when we talked about it at the end, they said, well, we proved we were moral at the beginning. Then we could go back in with a kind of free-for-all ability to choose any 
horrific experimental decision we wanted to put uh, the creatures through with a kind of impunity. That was really interesting. I suppose the one shame of how I set it up at the Science Museum was we couldn't pull out much useful data. When it's online, we'll be able to get a lot more interesting information from it. To see how differently things like age and time spent with it affect audiences' reaction to yeah, it. Yeah. It is fascinating that people tend to graft their empathy onto the things that are closest to them. But yeah. you keep calling them creatures, and mm. they are. They're, they're yeah. constructed mm. specifically to help the people we don't see yeah. that we can't empathise with because yeah. we haven't literally haven't seen them. Yeah. So, so all of the all of the people affected are represented through numbers. They are just cold numbers and cold facts. Um, and the creatures, you see one element of a creature at one point, which I won't talk about because it's a key moment, but um, you are so physically involved with them and the way in which we shot it was to make it feel as if they were really physically present that the, the decision-making is always swayed to this creature in front of you. We filmed in a, um, a disused hospital uh, and we actually filmed in the disused children's ward so it had all of these stickers on the walls of uh, giraffes and monkeys playing around so there's, there's all those kind of terribly disturbing things about you know children and growing and having to sacrifice them at some terrible point um, that plays into it as well yeah. It's fascinating as well that despite the kind of fancy medium you're working in it comes back to that fundamental filmmaking thing of empathy, character, yeah. making a connection with the mm. people you're watching. And that that's really interested me in the writing process that yes it's interactive but it's still a character a character's journey and their decisions and it's incredibly freeing and incredibly exciting to be able to say um, I've made this character do this well what if they did something else every time you write a normal script you're stuck with their single decisions whereas with this it's oh great what would happen if they did entirely the opposite I can go and explore that and film it and see what happens and then play with it so in lots of ways there were probably about I think there's 16, maybe 24 different films you could watch from all of the different options and get a totally different feel of it. And that's really freeing as a writer and a director to be able to play with that. It's like you've unlocked the multiverse. It is, yeah. It's kind of, <laughs> I, I had a terrible stray thought that it might be like quantum filmmaking in some strange way, but I'd never actually say that out loud. We'll give you a few more years yeah, to yeah, do yeah. that. Yeah. I'll, I'll, work, I'll work on that and then I'll get back to you.